Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're interested in how to replace the motor on your IBOS Polyphemus filament dryer, then stick around. I'm going to show you a couple of ways that this can be done. Let's go. So IBOS knows that the motor is not going to last forever. Um, right here in the manual, it tells you that the built-in rotation motor has a lifespan of approximately 1500 hours. If the motor has reached the end of its lifespan and is no longer functioning, you can visit the iBus official website to purchase a replacement motor. Now I went to the website, I did not see the motor listed, I also didn't see any kind of instructions on how to replace the motor, so we're going to talk about that. Now, obviously they know that the motor has that limited lifespan and they include the first replacement motor for you um, in the package, so at least you're going to get 3,000 hours of it uh, use out of this. But now let's uh, go into a couple ways you can replace the motor. Method number one, using the access door. This is a pretty straightforward uh, way to do it. However, I will warn you that it may actually take longer uh, than just taking the whole base off. So you've got the one screw here. If you take off this little door, you'll get access to the screws. You can see there's two screws that hold in the motor um, and then there's a clip that clip um, it may or may not be in the way you might have to move it out of the way to get access to the screws now the first time that I did this I had no idea if that clip uh, was not uh, or if it was glued down or clipped into something um, and I was a little leery of taking out the motor and then yanking on that uh, the wiring um, but uh, once you get the motor out then it's just a uh, matter of unclipping the quick release clip and you can swap out the motor and you can do this without taking uh, the base apart um, now that you've seen this video on YouTube you'll know that that clip isn't attached to anything and you can simply pull it out and uh, so choice is up to you to put the new motor in you're just going to clip uh, that electrical connection back um, but you will see it's a little bit tricky to get the motor back in um, it's kind of a tight fit and <clears throat> you uh, do run the risk of dropping screws inside the unit and that's what happened to the first time uh, to me and once I dropped the screw in there, I was like, wow, am I going to be able to get this, uh, you know, out of there without it going further into the unit? So I was a little bit uh, concerned with that. So you just got to kind of finagle everything. Eventually you'll get it all lined up. You'll be able to get your motor put back in place and like I said it may uh, actually take more time to go through this little access door than taking the entire base off um, and I'll show you that next it's very easy to to do that now the only downside to taking the base off is that um, well there's a couple one if you're not comfortable you know messing with electronics or getting inside there um, but the other one is you do have to remove uh, the little rubber feet now my unit did not have all four uh, feet on there when I bought it. I checked the box, it wasn't there. Um, so I only had to remove three feet, but uh, that's one way of doing it. So one would hope that they could remember to put all four feet on for something that costs $130, but uh, your mileage may vary. So that is the first method of removing the motor utilizing the little access door. Uh, the other way is to take the entire base off, and I will show you how that works here in just a moment. Method number two involves removing the entire bottom cover to gain access to the motor. So here you can see I've removed the entire bottom cover, which is just a matter of taking those four screws out after removing the rubber feet. Once the motor is removed, simply place in the new motor, and then reinstall the two screws that hold the motor into place. Once those screws are in place, secured, then reconnect the electrical connection. This is a keyed junction, so you need to make sure that the red lines up with the red. 
won't work the other way due to the key. Once the uh, connection is made, go ahead and fold the wires back. You will note there is a little channel for the uh, wires to uh, feed into, so make sure that you run the wires through that channel. And once you have all your wires tucked away, then you can replace the uh, bottom cover. It should fit nicely back into place. You do want to make sure that you don't uh, pinch any of your display wires uh, there in the front. Once that is all secure, you can replace uh, the little access door, which you honestly don't have to remove uh, if you're not going in that method. Um, and then you just replace the four screws that hold in the bottom cover. Once those four screws are installed, you can reinstall your rubber feet and your motor replacement will be complete. All right, let's dive into the teardown, or as I like to call it, tearing apart things that I paid for. Um, so what do we have here? So here you can see this is the little spot where the motor uh, gets attached. And then here we have the heater element and the electrical connection for the motor. There we have the circuit board. And then on this part, the bottom base part, let me uh, get this in frame. And after I get all these wires out of the way, um, what you can see here is the little blower fan. So uh, it's gonna be sucking in air from the sides here and then blowing in uh, to this little channel <clears throat> and then that's going to go through uh, the heater element. So let me slowly turn this over so that you can see the other side. Now, now you can see uh, the top side of the heater element, and I have removed um, this top cover. So you can see there's four screws that hold this top cover in that protects you uh, from contacting or filament from contacting. Uh, the heater element and it uh, blows air through those little channels. Now I have removed the rear roller uh, but I want to talk about uh, the drive mechanism uh, that makes this dryer uh, unique amongst its peers. So this is the drive mechanism and as you can see and it, it may be hard uh, to notice exactly here on the video um, but these wheels are slightly eccentric. Uh, so actually the wheel itself is completely round, but the channel that that rubber O-ring sits in has a high point on it. And so uh, as it turns, you'll see right um, there is a point uh, in that groove that is higher than the rest, and that causes um, that high point to, in, to engage with the rollers. Now they include some replacement O-rings there, uh, but they don't actually tell you about them. I didn't see anywhere in the manual where it talks about those you know, O-rings, replacing the O-rings, the fact that they're gonna wear out um, at, you know, from time to time or anything like that. Um, and you know these, these wheels are underneath uh, the rollers, so it's not super obvious on uh, what they are, or where they need to go. Now, what I'm pointing to here is is a little catch that uh, helps that uh, the drive mechanism lock in place. So you can see there's one screw here that uh, uh, locks it in, but um, when you take that screw out, it doesn't just pop right out. You know that clip on the bottom is kind of holding it in. Um, I didn't realize how it was actually held in until I took the bottom base off and then I was able to see that it was just a simple clip. So you don't have to take um, the bottom base off to get uh, this drive mechanism out. You can, as you can see here, you can if you just give it uh, a good amount of pressure, it'll pop right out and you can uh, remove that and then replace your O-rings. Now here we have the, um, the drive rollers. I don't know why they made them out of uh, really hard material instead of something that would be a little bit more grippy or rubbery. Um, but, uh, you know, they made their choices. Um, if you looked at my initial review, you will see that I did uh, create some uh, TPU sleeves that will fit on that. 
Um, so I'd encourage you to go take a look at that. Those are available on Maker World. Um, here, uh, what I'm pointing at, these are the side clips. They also have little latches on the bottom. And again, I wasn't sure how they came out initially. Um, but once I took the bottom off, I was able to see how those go in. And, and those also will just snap in uh, to place. So um, once you, uh, those, you can take them out from the top um, as well. I apologize for the uh, camera angle here. I'm a one-man show and this isn't always perfect, but now you can see how those roll in there. And as I turn uh, this drive wheel, you can see that when it engage, it, it hits that top, that higher uh, point on that rubber O-ring, it will um, engage and then uh, stop engaging. So that's kind of how that works. The uh, motor never stops running, but... Uh, you know, hopefully you found this all uh, interesting. Um, if you do, then I would encourage you to uh, like uh, the channel, subscribe, and uh, hopefully we can uh, keep on investigating things and learning together.